The drawing on the second of the ballroom seemed ready to go. It was quite a difficult one to do because the proportions on the canvas are different to the ones on the uh, study that I worked out on the computer. So I've had a bit of a problem around here, but I think I've got it together now. Smaller figures in this one, a lot more ceiling, a lot of atmosphere to do, quite uh, light keys of, of tone and colour. Um, we'll work out with the sponge roller again and then go into the um, brushes afterwards again. Well that's the drawing done for this next score on scene. We'll get on with it now with the uh, sponge rollers. It's going to be quite a difficult one because there's a lot of flat areas with just a little patterning in them. So I want to keep it still fairly contemporary without getting into too much detail straight away. So let's see how I can make these effects with the sponge roller first.
an out of artificial light, so I might have to adjust it again in the morning, but I've managed to get the first base coats on with the sponge roller only. This is the primary coats and I'll be working up now with brushes. Well, here we are again, ready to go on and do a little bit more today. In daylight, of course, things are quite different. But I've also put out new paints. At the end of a six-month period, and they were drying out, so I've had to replace them totally. But look at that lovely palette that we've got now. So for the moment, I'm going to continue with the sponge roller. I just want to work up some of these colours a bit lighter. It's quite different in daylight now. And uh, then I'm going to dip into my brushwork after I've got a bit more colour on here with the, with the rollers. A little bit of green at first, just to... Green and some pink together would be a strange colour. I think that's what we'll try first of all. Just tints of that. Almost got the colours I wanted now with my roll. I should go back to brushes in just a moment. Right, leave it at that and, and get my uh, brushes sorted out for slabbing in paint. And we're going to go fairly loosely with the brushes at first to remove these areas and then start working up the details finer and finer, just picking out the salient points. I'm going to start off with a half inch and uh, make up a few darks. Take some Prussian blue, a bit of burnt sienna. Got to actually start the drawing more carefully with the brush. Peeling the background, just indicating them at the moment. Just find them. Although they might seem quite quick to do, there's actually a lot of work in them. We're working out all of these, even if we're just hinting at things, it's a lot of work. A bit of feeling of all of these details. Even if I'm not going to show them.
that's enough for the uh, second day. Well there we are at the end of the second day, I suppose we're just over halfway through it now. This again, third day now. So we've had the drawing, we've had the rollers, we've had the rollers and then into the brushes and now we're going to continue working up these lighter tones with a brush. The overglazing happening this time. We've done uh, some glazing with the sponge roller and I've been working up these lighter tones like putting thinner coats over. I need to bring up some of these a little more. So I'm using thin coats now, almost as a glaze. I'm using a pink at the moment with a little bit of a, a violet. So very thinly, I'll have to go back down to smaller brushes shortly too to find this. I think the illusion of these little bits of glass. Okay, let's take a smaller brush and just make a start on what we're going to do here. There's going to be a lot of detail in this picture but there are places where I definitely do need it and I don't want any one part to take over and distract from the other. I want to keep it all fairly even. It's painting that little by little by little gradually building all of these up. Because they're in patterns, there really doesn't seem to be any easier way of using a sponge or anything like that to come up into these vertical lines of reflected dots. And as I said, I don't want it to take over the whole picture totally with going dotty. I suppose this is another example of when it's not just one colour that makes things shine or work or sparkle. You've got to look at all of these colours happening one next to another in here for this to actually work. The pinks against the light blues against the creams and so on to really make this thing shine and sparkle. If you really want this effect of light then we've got to work on it. No other way around it. It's just going lighter and lighter. We've got to look at whether I've got enough darks in as well. So I'm going to have to go back and look a little bit at at least very darks in the background. Coming down into here to make this stand out. big chunks on the um, on the film because I can't possibly fit in it'd be hours and hours and hours of work wouldn't it? So just to give you an idea that's all. Oh, I've got some of the darks in let's go back to the, the lightest we can go and that is pure white and see if we can drop in some of these very light areas here to chandelier and really try and get the feeling of light coming down from here. If I put it on, white tends to sink back a bit anyway, so I've got to redo bits of this. Like I say, my concern is I don't want the chandelier to take over too much. I've got to get the effort rest of the painting to catch up with this sooner. Otherwise nobody's going to look at the dresses of the ladies or the painting of the... Anything else? I don't want to work on that too much more. The winter allergies are being over here. I'm not being in France, but I should be now. Right, let's work on into these other colours. 
colours a bit more. I need to go back into some green, back into these a bit here. Maybe a touch of dark blue in that green. I suppose we'd better be having a look at the, the figures a bit more now. We've got the last to come back to those portraits. So I'm going to go to a slightly larger round brush. Let's look at these lovely delicate pinks and so on that we've got here that I could bring out a bit more now. Very, very light. Light blue maybe. Very, very light. Blue going on just down. Daylight that's coming in from the windows at the far side. Just want to really capture that light on her, like that. While we're on those light blues, we've got the same happening across here to capture the light blue. Just and that light, not too much. I've got a feeling that while I'm at it. Don't have the same happening. Not too much. We'll start painting portraits. I want to do that. I want to get the. I want to get a, an impression. That's all. Not making all that so warm. I've got to come back into here and start warming this up. That's the trouble. to make them look ugly and not easy swipe creepers. I have to go back and loose them.
Well, I think to the end of this piece, and I'm just adding a few little bits of black at the end. You know, I don't usually use black until the very end of it at all. I just want to pick out some of these patterns. Just get the darks a bit darker here and there. It'll make the colours that are there stand out more. It's like putting light next to uh, dark and warm, next to cool and so on. We can make the warm more by putting cools next to it, or the rough and rough about putting smooth next to it and so on. It's certainly been a complicated painting to do, and it's been a challenge. We miss much detail to try and simplify, and these last little additions of lights and darks can just make all the difference for painting. Can make a break of painting even, get them right or get them wrong. I think I've achieved what I wanted to achieve from that particular composition. It's certainly not been easy. You may need to stand back and look at a picture, then go back in and make your marks afterwards. But I reckon that one's done. Well, I don't have another one of these in mind for the moment. It's been an unusual experience. I've had great fun doing it, certainly been a pressure. Not sure where I'm going next. I'd look at my photographs and ideas and think I'd rather be out doing plein air. I'd like to be in France painting right now, that's where I should be a week ago. And I can just think of all the spring blossom that's happening in the gardens now, what a shame. But who knows, might be able to get over there in a month or so. We'll have to see what's going to happen. In the meantime, I have to wait and see what happens in the garden here. Not a lot, I think. But I might get something to paint out in plein air, the weather's nice.